You start seeing them. Yeah, if, if I start seeing them, then I'll start having questions, and then. And I'll, you would say it's okay. Eventually, you make laws saying no. If they want to become a tiger with a tail and, and, and a heart of a tiger, it's okay. I don't. I don't know. Where, I where, yet. where would we stop? Because they, they haven't existed yet. People are. People are identifying themselves as cats and dogs and wolves. Many things. They're transforming themselves. Are they, are they like transplanting? No, no, they, they're, they're reshaping their body as much as they can. Who can they are. That's their, that's their choice. Ah, so where does it stop? So what defines who you are is what you feel, right? Yeah. So eventually, for example, I can identify myself as a five-year-old so I can go to school and do all the exams. Or well, I can actually go into sports for young, like for example, what's happening today. I can identify myself as a transgender woman and compete in women's sports That's, and I win. Agree. That and I win. Agree with you. And I win. Agree with you. That's a problem. There's no problem, right? There, there is a problem. Why? Because you have a biological advantage. But that doesn't matter. I am a woman. When it, when it comes you are discriminating me of who am I just because I'm on the wrong body. Now we're, it wasn't now my we're, choice. Now we're yeah. actually, I do think that if a transgender woman, so she used to be a man, they now have a biological advantage. It's very difficult to say that they should be remain in the same gender. I agree that that's a problem. Yeah. But you know, you are now introducing something that I do not agree with. Discrimination. You're discriminating me because I happen to be in a male body. Or you're discriminating me. I'm actually a five-year-old, and you're discriminating me to go into a school. Um, and sit with you know other five year olds, or you can, you can see the potential, right? I can go there and then win or succeed in everything in life. I identify as the king of England, for example. Um, and he's, 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 these possibilities are so wild that where is the limit? That's why we need to question the whole gender and identity business. Islam offers us, but it's not what you think what you are. You are how you are created by God. He's given you. You might feel suddenly like, you know what, you are God yourself. There are people who think they are gods. Pharaoh or Pharaoh. He said, I am the greatest of all gods. So people can identify themselves with many things in terms of you know, what they are not and so on. Islam brings me back to reality. The reality is, he created us and these kind of feelings and inclinations and choices people will have. People will have a choice of attraction to the same gender, extraction to maybe beasts and animal, extraction to like, toys and trees, whatever. But God is saying, okay, you need to resist these attractions. Imagine somebody says, just imagine. I don't feel myself, I cannot control myself, but to kill. It's all within me. It's programmed. I was born that way. I cannot but go and rape a woman. I cannot do it. It's just me. So why are you going to blame me for it? Because that's me. Where does it stop? Islam is saying, yeah, some people may have psychopathic, for example, uh, a psychopath, may have this kind of feelings and inclinations and, and desires. It says, no, stop these and resist and fight those desires. And it gives you the mechanism for how to fight it. So, unfortunately, because today, like um, an intelligent woman like yourself, are agreeing to the societal liberal pressures of normalizing this, what's going to happen is, in the future, we won't be able to say no. Because by legislation, they will say no, you can't. I mean, you can't rectify someone who thinks he's a cat and he wants to eat cat food only. You can't do that. By law, you will be punished if you wanted to even encourage that individual and says you're not feline, you're not cat, you're punished for that because you're infringing on their identity. This is a mundane example. Yeah? So if we kept on allowing this liberal societal, the way it's going ahead, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a future which is very not very nice. Yeah? Islam puts us in a good kind of boundary. Because no, my homosexuality no, my was a 
in not too far away from this place. Why are you? Why are you pushing me? Why are you pushing me? you push me. You push me. Mister, can you can you leave look here? Look here. Islam is a Excuse me. Why are you? Why are you pushing me? Why are you? Come this way. Come this way. Come this way. Come this way. It's okay. Let me ask you. You are fasting. Let me ask you a question. Sir, I am fasting. Why? Right. Come here on this way. Fashion. Problem solved. Why Islam is a discriminating woman? By not uh, going in a paradise, Islam is putting a woman in a hellfire. Why is that? Why is that? Uh, right. To continue, as you say. Um, first issue. Answer the question first. Uh, Answer says, the question first. What says? Shall I give you the verse? It gives you a black and white statement of believing men and believing women, righteous men and righteous women. The ones who is uh, the one who fights yeah. men and women, men and women, men and women, women, women. That's false. Got... That's false. So, sorry, can I? That's false. That was actually false. my next question. Yes. I want to, I'm coming from a place of curiosity because I don't understand. I want to understand your religion. So, so, so I'm, I'm trying to explain to you. So I I'm just going to understand your approach to women. Yeah, exactly. Um, let me show you what what I'm saying. Um, okay. Of children. I'll give you the Arabic and the English translation. Sorry, I don't no, no, that. no, no. Quran is not in English, but in Arabic. Just to highlight and you hear the difference. Inna al Muslimina wal Muslimat, wal Mu'minina wal Mu'minat, wal Qanitina wal Qanitat, wal Sadiqina wal Sadiqat, wal Sabirina wal Sabirat, wal Khashiina wal Khashiat. والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وعد الله Surely the men who submit and the women who submit and the believing man and the believing woman and the obeying man and the obeying woman and the truthful man and the truthful woman and the patient man and the patient woman and the humble man and the humble woman and the alms giving man and the alms giving woman and the fasting man and the fasting woman and the men who guard their private parts and the women who guard and the men who remember Allah much and the women who remember Allah has prepared for them forgiveness and a mighty reward. Right. So it is incorrect and a lie in speaking oh. Quran to say women are not going to go to paradise. No. God is the lie. not only specify, he, he even said like because men and women, men and women, this man, this man, this man. All of us. So God has created us with different roles and responsibilities. In his sight, the reward is the same. The obligation. Believe in Allah and love and respect Him is the same. How you look on you is the same. You may have more of responsibility, and in fact, you may have more respect than the father. At one point, a man came and asked our Prophet Muhammad, who deserves more from my mother and the father in respect and so on. The very vague statement includes everything, right? It's not just respect in only speaking, but it, well, everything how you deal in trust. He says, you know what Prophet said? Your mother. The man said, and then who are Prophet? He said, your mother. The rapist. And then who? The beautiful prophet. He says, your mother. Look what man is thinking. So man Allah, between the father and mother, he's saying, your mother, 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 mother. Said, and then who says, your father. So here from what we understand, because the mom and dad, even though they're parents, God has given some roles and responsibilities which are different. So how we appreciate our mother and so on, how mom, we are not even able to repay a single second of pain she endured while we were pregnant, while she was pregnant with us in her womb. The, the, the pain in childbirth that she suffered because of us. The pain when we were 
crying, we couldn't change our diapers or our nappies, and she claimed us, looked after us, and I chewed. But this love of mother, if you look at the creation, how that So God is saying, this is how to respect. In fact, there is a hadith in a matter of, you know, in a figurative way. Paradise lies under the feet of your mother. Not literally, just to show you the respect mother deserves. Why Muhammad is having a problem with women? So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described women in the way that is deserving of her respect. The women, those who are men fitting, will not go to the paradise. You are interrupting. And I don't yes. want to speak to you. Thank you. Come on. I don't want to speak to you. Come I'm on. speaking to this uh, lady here, if you don't mind. So you don't want to would you hear respect, the truth? Would you respect me so if I don't want to speak want to you? you don't want to hear the truth. Uh, I don't want to speak you, to you. Is that you okay? don't want to hear the truth. You don't, you don't want to hear the truth. This is an example of nowhere. What? You don't want to hear the truth. If you don't mind, I don't want to speak to you. You don't want to hear the truth. Right. This is just is it hurting you? Sorry. Is the truth hurting so, you? The Prophet the, the man Muhammad himself said, Africa. the woman will not enter into paradise because they are not spreading. They are not spreading. I will ask the question. What is the attitude towards menstruating? Menstruating women should not be harmed. So they should not, you, men who are husbands of menstruating women, should not have sexual intimacy when she's in menstruation. Because that would be a harm, a physical harm as well. Not only just hygienic thing, stay away of sexual intimacy when she's menstruating. Is other. They ask you, yes, they ask you about Mahi menstruation, say, this is other. Yeah. And they ask you about menstruation, say, it's harm, other. To you, Muhammad. So keep away from the wives during menstruation. And do not approach them until they're pure, meaning they're already finished and clean. And do not approach them until they're pure, and when they have purified themselves, then come to them from where Allah has ordained for you. Indeed, Allah loves those who are constantly repentant, and those who have purified themselves. Your women are a piece of cultivation. This is where you have your next generation. That's the insult. Your offspring comes from them for you. So come to your place of cultivation however you wish and put forth for yourself. And fear Allah and know that you will meet Him, meet Allah and give good tidings to the leader. So it doesn't say, well, some people it doesn't like to think like menstruation means women are totally uh, an, an impure one. So Not some people. You're simply prophet. saying, because prophet. we know when people are in their menstruation the periods, they're under a lot of emotional, psychological stress is all associated with it. And and people, don't pray. Don't pray. Yeah. Oh yes, that's a good point. If people, women, are in their menstruation, they are exempt from fasting, exempt from even praying. We can make this up later. That's why they cannot enter in the paradise. Now, um, I, I, I don't know what this gentleman is saying. Um, I, I don't know. Is, is there, is there, is there, you can leave the hecklers. You are just a heckler. Your prophet is saying this. I just, I, I just showed you what the Quran says about women. Cannot enter into paradise because they are menstruating. Sahih Bukhari. 
Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim. There is an Sahih obvious Bukhari. issue Sahih with that passage. Oh. What's the issue? Below two. So that is not It's not, it's not, it's not so you only. All Muslims, they are liars. They are liars. Even the rich people, they are prophets. The men are the 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 about to approach them until they have purified themselves. How you purify themselves is to bow. That's what he's asking. You haven't had the ritual bath when you're finished with Jaya Muta. So you're not impure in the sense that you're not impure in the sense that you're not impure in the sense that you're not just you're like Phil. That's what the Quran is describing. The Quran is saying you cannot approach her with the sexual intimacy until it's ended and they have come out of this by having a bath. Thank you. I've got one final question sure. before I go. Um, why is it that the oppression of women, and I, I can possibly anticipate a response, which is that what these people are doing is separate from what the Quran says they should be doing, right? Possibly that's your response. But my question is, why is it that there is a higher propensity of oppression of women, you know, lack of education, um, that sort of thing, you know what I mean, um, within Islam, Islamic countries? Why is it that Islamic countries are able to accept that or feel the need to progress? Very good question. Firstly, it is not correct to say Islam oppresses women in terms of education and their progression. I, I, should, I should say, um, I, I'm making a clear distinction between what the Quran says and what people do. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm giving you a broader understanding yes. of, from the source itself. The Prophet of Islam, Muhammad Islam says, I'm giving some reward, or I'm giving some reward. Seeking knowledge is obligatory for every Muslim. There are some narrations which talk about men and women. This word in Quran. Yeah, yeah. Read the Bible. Yeah. 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 Right. So the Prophet said it's an obligation. The religion that we have today, you'll be surprised. The knowledge of the religion is transmitted by a lot of people, if not most of the religion. Aisha radiallahu anha transmitted so much of the knowledge of our religion. If I were to ask you from any culture for the last 1000 years, let's go back say 200 years in 18th century to 1000 years. Let us find out women's scholars in every society, every culture and their contribution. You will struggle to find and to name women scholars, scientists, philosophers and so on throughout the world. But you'll be surprised to hear in Islam, if you were to ask me now, I can give you 30 volume work. I'm actually not surprised. I know, I know that yeah, yeah. about Islam. So I'm, I'm just telling you, 30 volume work of yeah. Muslim sahabiyat of women who contributed to knowledge, civilization and so on and so forth and passing this knowledge. The first university in the world, in Morocco, was by someone called Fatima, a woman, okay. from, of course, an Islamic background, she's Muslim. So, Islam never discouraged women from learning and to, to preach. As I said, many scholars today, they have women teachers where they have to get the certificate from because they are the top ones are the women. And that continued. What happened is as many societies, Islamic lands, it's a long history. Islam got, the, as a state level, spliced by imperial forces from different others. France, Britain, and, 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 and from the 1924 uh, thing last or something, right? And they instigated puppet regimes, puppet rulers and so on. And the whole idea was, yes, we will let you have your state back. But in our terms, they will do what we ask them to do. So there were puppet regimes, so they corrupted the education system and instilled in a system which is secularized, non-Islamic, and that's why the product was there coming from generation after generation. If you go to Emirates now in some countries like this, the majority of the people are women studying in university. A woman. Majority of them. Educated and women. Some countries, like Afghanistan, which is the scapegoat in the media, they're not 
defending women to education and so on. That's their particular way of thinking and their approach they're doing. Islam never discouraged, as you said. They've taken a stand. I don't want to defend them. I don't want to criticize them because it's an isolated case. But everywhere else, Islam doesn't discourage, rather it encourages. It makes you obligatory, as I said. It is obligatory on every Muslim to acquire knowledge. The scholars would say, the first and foremost obligation is about religious knowledge. But women and then in secondly, Iran, they are protesting. That's another scapegoat protesting. example about Iran, yeah. right? Because Iran is another regime in which their particular understanding of Islam and so on has compromised you know, the position of women and so on and so forth. They are not so what we are seeing rather is examples which are an isolated case. These are those that excuse the data. Yeah? Whenever we look at data, these data disagreements, these are, what's the term in um, statistics? I've forgotten how it escapes me. Uh, you can't use this to normalize the data. We know, we know their regimes, their particular understanding of Islam has corrupted or made it to be like that. But if you study the Islamic history in terms of approach to how women should be, should they be oppressed or should they be educated? You will see it's the opposite. My question then is separating the theory, the no, no, theology. No, 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 no. So I, I understand that from the Quran, you know, there's equality in the Quran. That's the theology. The reality is that women are being oppressed and they are being, they have to wear certain things even if they don't want to. They are not getting the educational experiences that they should be getting. That's the reality. So my, my question then is why is it, and you, you mentioned data skewing. Um, outliers, I've got the word Outliers, yes. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not sure I agree with you there because it does, I, I'm finding it very difficult to name even one Arab 